What is going on guys? Welcome back. This is video number 13 in this series. If you guys are brand new to this series, you should definitely head back and check out the first videos. There will be a link to the full playlist right here on the top of the screen. So today's video is actually a little bit different than usual. I wanted to take this episode to kind of talk about MVC. And MVC just stands for Model View Controller. And it's not a framework, it's not a programming language, it's not anything like that. It is literally just a way of organizing your code. And to be honest, I'm not an expert in MVC uh, at all. I mean, I've been doing a lot of research in the past few days and just kind of studying up on it and learning more about it and why people use it. And it's starting to make more sense to me, but I just want to take this opportunity because of the fact that over the past couple of days, I kind of, just to mess around with MVC, started our application over from scratch using MVC. And so I want to take this opportunity to actually show you guys what I've done so far using this MVC style of coding and actually show you how it works and what my impression is, at least, of how it's supposed to be used. So right now I have a brand new HTML, CSS, and JavaScript page that I built with this new MVC style. And I also took advantage of this opportunity and started working more modularly with my uh, CSS and HTML. So you'll see if we take a look at some of my CSS, a lot of these have a bunch of classes on them. And I don't know if this is better practice or not, but it makes it a lot easier because a lot of these classes are things that I can recycle a lot. So you'll take a look and I've got a lot of these windows and tabs and stuff that I'm using and I've added a lot of these basic classes that I use pretty often to all of these. And then I've started to add back in our player that we have down here. If we take a look at our CSS now, I've got all of our basic CSS in here. And these are all the things I've added so far. And if we actually take a look at the game, this is the game now. So I've added in all of our nav bars and everything over here. You'll notice that some of this stuff still isn't there. Like we're missing a lot of stuff from the previous version. But I did add all of our tabs back in. And I actually added these all in using our CSS transitions rather than my animate functions that I had before in JavaScript. And so you'll see I have all of our windows open here on the left as well. And then these pages are set up too, but they just don't have a background, so they are not visible. But if we actually take a look, we can see these are all of our pages right here. And if we click on these, you'll notice that our active class changes on each of the pages as we go down. And so, so far I've noticed that I actually prefer this method over my previous method of scripting a lot of this stuff because honestly it keeps your code a lot cleaner and just makes animations a lot easier to manage. But let's go ahead and get into the MVC part of this video because I know you guys are interested in seeing this MVC structure and how it actually works. This is what I have in my script right now and you'll notice that it's about 400 lines of code so far. And so if we go ahead and open this stuff up, actually before we open it up, I'll just show you what we have here. Basically we have a bunch of constructor functions that we're creating our different mo our model, our view, and our controller that we have here. And then you'll also notice we have a couple of things like event and carousel, which are two things that I'm, well, the event is part of our model view controller. Um, I was using another reference online, and so I was just reading about the event and how you're supposed to use it, and it's making more sense to me now. And I'm going to actually explain how that works as well too. But let's take a look at where all of this starts because I don't want to confuse you guys with all of this. So this function will get called automatically when our game loads and it's really just an anonymous function so it doesn't have a name or anything. It will just call all of this stuff and then just call our controller and call our prepare function that's actually inside of our controller right here. And so what we're doing here is we're essentially defining a few different variables that are actually our constructors. So we create our player, which is a new player, and you'll notice the player isn't here, the player's actually on our HTML page like we saw earlier. So we have our player constructor here. So you'll notice that our function for our player and then our player prototype, and essentially what this is is 
Inside of our actual function, we're establishing all of our actual variables. And so if you're new to this series, the reason why player is actually stored on our HTML page is because our HTML page is actually going to be a PHP page when it's uploaded to the server. And all of these variables in here are going to need to be set dynamically with PHP. So that's why we have to have it on this page and actually reference it from our index page. So to give a little bit more explanation on what MVC is, the idea behind it is that you have these three different elements and basically what it is is you have the view that handles all of your drawing to your actual screen so the screen as you can see all of this stuff on our screen is all being drawn and updated with by the view so this is the actual view here. And so you'll notice if we just take a look inside of the view at what it's actually doing, inside of our view prototype, we've got functions in here that actually draw all of our navigations and stuff on the screen. And then like we have things for positioning and opening and closing tabs and redrawing different things on the screen as well. So that's what the view is supposed to be doing here. That's the view, the game view constructor is defined with variables and our functions for actually updating the view that the player is looking at. And now the second piece to this is actually the controller. And so what the controller is supposed to do is it has access not only to the view, but also to the model. Because the model, if we jump over to the model real quick, the model is basically the opposite side of the view. So the model is going to be the actual object that holds all of like, essentially holds the game variables and it will set and get the different game variables that we have. So for instance, in here, we have our header and right nav bar options that basically holds which tab we have open. So if we take a look at our menu, when we click on this and open it, basically what we're doing is telling the view that our button got clicked, which is then telling the controller, which is then telling the model. So for instance, our right nav key right here would be if, say for instance, that we open the mining page right here, well the mining page now gets saved right here. So mining is now set in the model. So we have access to this model variable and that's where we save all of our key information for the game. And then if we go ahead and take a look at our controller again, because now you'll notice that the controller has like I said already, the model and the view, it has access to both of them. And the reason is because the controller is supposed to be the bridge between the view and the model. So remember the model holds all of your variables in the game and then your view is just updating the actual view that the player is seeing on the screen as well as managing click events. And then the controller is just supposed to send the messages back and forth. So the idea now, and this part actually took me a little while to understand why you're doing it this way, but you have a an event now. And so this event, if we take a look at what this event constructor actually is, we've got our sender, which essentially tells us which thing is sending this event. So basically it's either gonna be the view, the model, or the controller that's sending this event, and that's what would be held as the sender. And our listeners would actually be an array of functions that would get called whenever an event is actually, whenever we want to actually call an event. So in this case, what you would do is first you want to attach the event. So whatever it is, you need to attach that actual listener that's going to be on that event. And then whenever you want the code to call that's actually been attached to the event that you created, you would just call the notify. And what the notify would then do is run through a list of all those listeners that have been applied. And then it will call all of those passing in the sender and the arguments. And so it's kind of confusing and I still am kind of a little confused as to why all of it's necessary necessarily, but I have noticed why you do need it and it's kind of difficult to explain. But if we take a look at an example of how we're using this event, we can look at one of our functions that actually draws our nav options to the screen. So if we jump down here, we'll start at the very beginning. So inside of our actual view prototype, you'll see we have a function for adding our different navs. So our add head nav is actually what's drawing these four navigation buttons on our screen. 
And then obviously we have our left and we have our right, which is just these options and then these options. And then so let's just take a look at our left nav, or we could even do our right nav since we can actually see those popping out. We can, we can take a look at how that's actually happening. So if we look at our add right nav here, we have a few things going on. So first, I mean, we can kind of ignore a lot of this stuff because it's just the looping through and adding those elements. So if you see, we're, we're creating a new list element here, and then we're basically just setting its attributes and its inner HTML, and then we're just appending it to our navigation. And then we're just calling to actually update that bar so that it gets updated with the correct level. But what we're really interested in right now is this actual listener that's being applied to this list item. So you'll see that we're actually setting the li on click, which is our function that gets called whenever we click. And so what's happening is it's calling a function, passing in the key, and the key is obviously just the key that we have saved, which is either the mining string or the smithing or whatever other one it would be. And so what we're doing inside of this function now is we're actually notifying our right nav option clicked, which in this case, if we take a look back up here, we've defined that right here. So right here, we've said that this dot right nav option clicked equals a new event. And remember, we pass in this because this is associated with the actual game view. And that was just what's sending the request. And so now we know that we have, we know that it's being notified and passing in the actual key whenever we click on it. But now, obviously, we're notifying, but we haven't actually attached anything to call yet because remember we need to attach a function for it to actually call or else when we notify there's not going to be anything there. So what we would do is then jump down and check inside of our controller now and see that we actually have a bunch of attachments going on right here. So this is what where we're actually attaching to that event now. So inside of here if we take a look at our right nav option clicked you can see that inside of this, we're calling this dot view. And remember the view is just the view we have defined up here. And then we're actually accessing that right nav option clicked and we're just attaching a function now. So now this function is being attached. And so when we call notify, it's actually going to run through and call this function that's right here. So then we have this dot select right nav option and we're passing in the arguments dot key because remember this is returning our sender and arguments if we jump up here to our notify this is where it's actually getting called so it's passing the sender and it's passing arguments and for arguments we had passed our key right here so you can see it's already getting kind of confusing. I'm confusing myself just running through all of this stuff and you guys are probably super lost if you are not familiar with this concept. So if anything, just remember for our event that you're basically either attaching or notifying for your event. And attaching is just attaching a function to the event and then notifying is just letting it know that it's ready to call those functions that you attached. So now that we called select right nav option, select right nav option is now defined inside of our game controller prototype. So if we actually take a look, our right nav option is actually right here. And so now we're taking that key that we were passed and we're passing it into here. And so now this key will actually be managed. And so what we do now from the controller is actually update the model and the view separately so that the model and the view don't really ever have to talk to each other. So basically what you're doing now is for this, I'm just checking to see if the current nav navigation is the one that they clicked on then that means that in this case, it would be if, say for instance, I have the mining page open already and then I click on the mining again, that's when there's a match. So what this is doing is saying that if there is a match, basically in, in here, you wanna tell the view that you just wanna close the tabs because that just allows us to actually close the tab when we click on it again rather than just keep it open or open it again or something like that. And then before that, we're actually setting the model. So remember we talked about actually setting our selected keys. So in this case, we were setting our selected right nav key. And what we're doing is we're checking to see if there's a match, then we want to unselect it. So we just wanna turn it to an empty string. But if 
there isn't a match, then we want to go ahead and just update the right nav key with our key that we passed in. And then one more thing for the view is that if there wasn't a match, that means that we obviously want to be opening a tab because we want to open a new one. So we would then just call open tab passing in our key right here. And so that is essentially an example of our MVC working right there. And I know it's super confusing. Uh, the event thing took me a while to grasp, like I said, and some of this stuff, it may seem kind of unnecessary because you're wondering, you know, why do you have to jump through so many hoops just to do one simple thing? Why can't you just you know, on your click listener, just call one function that updates your module and updates whatever else. It seems like you have to write just a ton of different variables and events and functions and all this stuff. It seems like a lot of extra work. And honestly, I don't fully understand it quite yet either, but I'm assuming when my program gets to be a lot bigger and I've added in a lot more stuff, I'll start to appreciate it a little bit more when things are a little bit easier to manage. But in any case, I hope this video was super helpful. I know that it was kind of confusing and you guys might still have a lot of questions and definitely leave those down below if you do. Um, I've watched a few YouTube videos on MVC and there are some people who explain it pretty well, but I've never actually seen anybody go over actual examples of what it looks like when you're using it. And so I wanted to make this video just to help you guys out because I think that this will give you guys a better idea, like a working example of how MVC actually works. And so if some of you have more experience with MVC, definitely leave comments down below and let me know. And also to help other people out who are trying to learn MVC. But in any case, guys, thank you so much for watching and be sure to like the video if you guys are enjoying this series or if you guys really appreciated this kind of example of MVC and how it's used. And then, like I said, comment down below with suggestions and questions and be sure to subscribe to my channel. My face will be on the screen right here. So you guys should go ahead and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.